Okay, so uh, and thank you so much for all to join this session and uh, I mean, showing interest in this tool. Uh, my tool name is Nightingale, uh, which is uh, if it if if I uh, conclude, it's uh, the nature of this tool. It's a Docker image and Docker image for pen tester. So let's get started. So before jumping to the actual uh, presentation, actual uh, demonstration of the tool, uh, what exactly tool is doing? and uh, what are the tools and what are the configurations and what are the programming language uh, this tool has been supported. So before jumping into that, so let me tell you the problem statement. So why and with that problem statement, uh, I will I will clear each and everything like why I created this application or two. So uh, I am uh, doing bug bounty like uh, three or 3.5 years back. So I have to create a separate environment in the virtual machine. And uh, to create a separate uh, environment in the virtual machine, we need to install uh, multiple programming languages support like due to the nature of the uh, um, various tools or various uh, open source tools we can say, which we use in our bug bounty uh, uh, process for any of the target, whether it can be web, whether it can be mobile or network or anything. So I have to take a, a one day from like from morning, I, I will start like, uh, configuration of uh, the tool and uh, installing all the programming languages and you know uh, set up the configuration files for specific tools like they require some uh, some configuration some external configuration and other part of the stuff so i'll i have created that uh, environment and next day or uh, after some day like uh, again when i start my virtual machine it got crashed now the problem is when once your virtual machine got crashed it's pretty uh, tough for me, for me as well. Like uh, I face this to not able to recover that particular instance and my complete data, my complete tool installation and my complete configuration, uh, including the programming languages installation completely got purged. And I have to create, I have to make, I have to follow all the steps again and again after, you know, after some, some period of time. So with that only Nightingale came into an existence and I, thought uh, this this uh, solution will be a better solution uh, in, in terms of you know uh, start doing pen testing or start doing any of the any uh, testing in any of these scope so before jumping to actual uh, presentation actual uh, introduction of this tool so let me tell you about myself so i am uh, rajan aguri and i work as is consultant second at fis global uh, there is an organization in India, which is named as Isaac. Uh, and from that organization, I uh, I got this title that cyber time intervention officer, where we usually take some cyber time cases and, you know, uh, interact the uh, local police stations to help them to provide some useful insights with them and to discuss uh, about the same about any of the cases. I am also a Senec Red Team member. Uh, I am contributing to OAP's community by providing the best uh, the knowledge with the best of my knowledge and uh, i create uh, videos on youtube so currently i have uh, created a playlist for mobile pen testing in android specifically and uh, i write blogs uh, on on uh, various technical specifications regarding uh, mobile pen testing regarding any for county sort of uh, procedure that we have to follow for a certain or a, for a specific uh, vulnerability Apart from my all technical things, I play guitar for the Indic music. So this is my part time, uh, uh, what we can say, um, my uh, part time uh, entertainment sort of thing. So I do this for uh, for my fun only. So coming to the, uh, the introduction of the Nightingale. So about the Nightingale. So Nightingale is nothing but a, a completely based on the Docker technology. And uh, this Docker technology, I have created a, a Docker file for uh, uh, like providing all the configuration and all the other stuff. We will see in, in the later slide, like uh, uh, how I create the architecture of this particular tool and uh, how you able to uh, connect or how you able to run the container for the same. Okay, so let's talk about some, uh, some features of this tool. So, uh, Nightingale is a platform independent. So what exactly does it mean? Like uh, if any of the operating system support Docker, Nightingale can be, it can be able to run on that particular uh, operating system. So whether it can be Mac OS, whether it can be Linux, uh, Ubuntu, Mint, whatever suits you, 
and uh, whether it can be Windows 11 or 10. So I think Docker is uh, is something like it is uh, it is like it is um, it can be run in in uh, each of the operating system. So Nightingale has the multiple programming language. So now this point is something like uh, you can relate uh, you, when you have to install uh, Python, when you have to install Go language, when you have to install Node uh, with the use of NVM, when you have to use uh, I mean install Java. So you have to uh, run some some commands uh, according to the operating system. So if we talk about uh, Windows, then you have to download the exe files. If you if we talk about uh, Linux, then you have to download the Debian file or uh, like by installing the utilities. And in Mac OS, there is again a brew which again used for installing these uh, utilities. But in Nightingale, you don't need to install anything. Once you up the container, once you start the container, all your programming languages will be installed and will be there for uh, for for the use of further uh, further uh, like task or the further operation you will be going to perform. Now the third point is booting is very fast. Now boot uh, so booting is something like we can relate when we start our machine, uh, start our host machine or the main machine we can say, and it will take time to you know load all the background processes, all the uh, functionalities, all the services which is necessary for you know. Uh, start the host service or the machine. Now, booting is very fast. Now, uh, exactly does it mean is like this container, uh, this Nightingale will will take not more than when you uh, like like you just blink off an eye and it will it will start and it will uh, like ready to use uh, like a setup tool. So you don't need to wait for uh, one to two minutes to just boot up boot up that particular process and uh, start working on that. A second point, uh, next point is uh, all tools installed already. Now, what exactly does it mean? Like um, all the tools which may be required or which is required at the time of pen testing as per your requirement. So let's say if you're working uh, for testing a network, I mean, uh, a bunch of uh, IPs, right? Now you required NMAP for the same. So you can uh, use that particular uh, tool and that tool is already installed in your uh, Nightingale. So you don't need to run apt get install and nmap. So it will install that particular thing and then you will be start working on that. So it that complete process has been uh, done at the time of image building at the time of Docker image building. So, uh, so now if you want to use, uh, let's say nmap, then you just need to type nmap and you will be, uh, you will be work like a pro. Now it's, is very easy to set up. So you don't need to configure anything uh, during the setup of this uh, Nightingale. So what you have to do is like install the Docker engine in your uh, respective operating system, and you don't need to worry about anything regarding the setup of the same. And the very last point, I mean, not last, actually the second last point is, uh, it is for the CLI lovers. Now, uh, those who want, who's working, uh, like who likes working in the command line tools or uh, working with those uh, tools which provide you data over the terminal in a specific format. So that that tool is for uh, those. But if anyone wants to, if anyone don't uh, don't love that CLI part, they can also love this tool because this is completely and this is very fast and it you will you will uh, getting all the tools pre-installed. You don't need to uh, do anything. Now the main part is uh, Nightingale will cool down your frustration level. I mean, uh, that frustration level is like uh, I told you in the problem statement, uh, like that frustration when your uh, configured virtual machine got crashed every time. And in Nightingale, so somehow, some way your container got crashed and your data will be, uh, your data will not crash, your uh, configuration will not cr uh, crash, your installation tools will not crash or will not purge anyway. So once you once you again, uh, again start your container, all your configuration, all your installation tool, programming language support, data, everything will be there. You don't need to worry about like your data will be lost or uh, anything else. Like that, that happen usually happen in virtual machines. Okay, so before jumping to uh, again the demonstration, let me uh, tell you the concept of uh, like a little concept about Docker. What exactly Docker is and why I choose this Docker. So if we talk about virtual so before jumping to the actual con uh, difference for this, uh, let me tell you one thing. I'm not. I'm not telling like the uh, virtual machine is uh, not good at, at uh, in this particular Nightingale. 
it is good, but there are some uh, pros and cons. So what I believe is like, so that's why I uh, choose the Docker uh, technologies to create this Nightingale. Okay, so now uh, coming to the difference. Um, okay, so in virtual machine, there is a there is a concept called hypervisor and above of that, there are multiple guest operating system and those guest operating system has their own binaries and libraries and other services, which usually we see in our host machine or main machine. And on the top of that, we are running a separate application so that we can uh, like bifurcate all the application according to the guest operating system. Now, if we talk about a Docker operate, uh, I mean, containerization system. So there is an operating system, which again, our uh, main machine, and there is a container engine, which is nothing but a Docker engine or the Docker software, which are respective of their operating system. And at the top of that, there are images which contains binaries, libraries, and other services which required normally required at the uh, for any of the operating system. So, um, and on the top of that, each of the uh, Docker image or image we can say uh, has their application, and they are uh, like you can uh, you can uh, communicate with each of the application. And you, if you don't want to communicate any of the app, uh, application and you want to run separately, then you can do that also. There are some configuration in the Docker at the time of uh, creating the Docker container. So there are some configuration. And with that configuration, you can able to uh, like disconnect a, a specific application to the network. So this is the main concept. This is the very basic concept. And uh, this is very um, uh, highlighted concept that, uh, for which like I choose that uh, Docker Docker technologies for creating this nightingale. Okay, so I have created one uh, file that is practice mantra and uh, which says like I believe in hands-on practice. So let's jump to the practical implementation. Uh, how we can go with that uh, that demonstration and uh, the source code of the tool. Just a second. <clears throat> for all of us, especially developers, and uh, I see that the image that you're trying to, uh, that you have developed, of course, for us would be very useful, especially for everyone who likes to use command line interface, especially. I see that you're ready to continue with our presentation, so I will give the word to you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, so uh, so let's let's go to the architecture of this application. And for the uh, uh, architecture of this application, it is very simple, very uh, readable in format. Like you don't need to uh, like you will not be able to confuse in that particular thing. Like how we can go with uh, uh, the step by step procedure for the same. So uh, for every category, I have uh, defined these uh, categorization for a, like every scope, whether it can be. Uh, Word list I can also consider as a scope because we are using these as a fuzzing or you know uh, like a directory nomination and other part of the uh, brute forcing and other part of the uh, methods that we usually perform in in our uh, methods in our uh, task or in our daily job. So the so all these files I mean in the Docker uh, Docker folder files all the categorization of the files has been uh, available and if we talk about let's say web uh, VAPT. So, but before jumping to that, uh, let me tell you, uh, let me show you that uh, programming languages. So that programming languages, we usually start with uh, pulling the Debian file, which is again a base file, we can say, and uh, followed by all the library installation that is required for uh, uh, any of the Linux environment which we usually do once we uh, once we install ubuntu system or mint or any any other uh, linux flavor for the same we usually do update and upgrade to uh, to update all the libraries that has the upgrade for this specific version or specific uh, library and uh, followed by installation of the python 3 module followed by uh, java module i mean java programming languages followed by go language followed by uh, Node.js. And once all the configuration setting has been done, uh, I have just clear all the unnecessary things from the uh, from the image just to make the less size of this particular image. Now, that is very important. Uh, that programming language file is very important. So that will depend on the other categories or other files of the scene. So if we talk about uh, web, so I have just taken this particular programming language because I have already create, created that images 
So I will not take any of the another data, uh, like another new data for the snake. So I'll take the data from this particular image and I move further for uh, installing all the tools which is required at the time of web penetration testing. So like the architecture goes like, I have created again a build essential that is again required because that will only provide you the data which is uh, which is available on the uh, home directories or any of the directory which has the uh, I mean static data or static files. But it will not provide anything like uh, uh, module installation, library installation. So everything will take care with this particular image, and the rest of the thing will take care by uh, by the image, by the uh, uh, by the update and upgrade command. So now we have the support of Python and uh, uh, Go, Node.js, and Java languages. So next, I have created the directories. And that directory is nothing but like I just cloning all the required tools in the specific uh, folder so that we will not confuse in any way. And uh, uh, I have created the uh, environment variable for the scene. And with that environment variable, we can uh, call this particular directory wherever we want in this particular uh, code. So that is again a very uh, uh, a plus point for this. Like, if I want to call this particular grab pattern somewhere else in the code, so I can just put this uh, dollar and followed by curly braces and provide the environment variable for the same, which is uh, which is very normal in uh, Linux machines, which we uh, we we all usually doing the same in our day to day life. So uh, coming coming uh, down to this particular thing, so so like I just take this particular directory and just cloning all the tools which is required for you like for required uh, at the time of testing. Then I, uh, so after creating, after cloning the, uh, I mean, repository, it automatically create the folder. So I just go to that folder, uh, run the Python commands and it will come automatically set up all the things, all the, uh, I mean, required things for the same. So that is, that is particularly uh, done for the web application, web VAPT thing. So once if you install a setup file or uh, any module installation, so it will goes into the library system, which which is not copied uh, from one OS to another OS. So for specifically this file, I have to create, I have to run this uh, these uh, installation module file. So if I if I change the Docker file, we have to again uh, install these these module because of the nature of the 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 modules of Python. So uh, like we have the programming language support, but we have to install all the modules for the same. And next, uh, again, I just uh, install AMRs and other, other uh, part of the application. And again, uh, I did like I remove all the unwanted things for the same. And it is uh, the concept is same for all the files, which is uh, mentioned here. Like if we talk about uh, OSINT and uh, see, if we have already the uh, the programming language support, what we are doing is like we are just um, uh, like installing all the requirement things sort of uh, for the for these of the tools. And uh, coming to the main file now, main file has something like uh, it is already um, mentioned. It is already taking the uh, the 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 data from the other images, other file images. Now these are the other file images. Now uh, it is copying the content of uh, the image from this particular directory to this directory. Now this particular directory is nothing but I have mentioned this here. Now this is this complete configuration work as a separate image, and these images are work as a separate image. Now if I want to copy data from one image to another image, then this particular configuration will work here. So now uh, this is the this is the uh, working of. Uh, what we can say, the uh, working of uh, this, I mean, the architecture of this uh, tool. Let's jump to the um, the demonstration part of uh, Nightingale. Okay, so uh, this is my repository. You can just uh, type user colon uh, Raja Nagori. So you will be getting uh, this particular uh, repository in your machine. And I have uh, mentioned each and every detail, uh, the very bare minimum and bare basic uh, detail in this particular uh, readme section. 
where you will be able to get uh, that like about the pros and cons and whatever I just told you in the very first in the very beginning of this uh, presentation. So here, if we if we go with uh, okay, if I if you if anyone wants to uh, check the architecture diagram, like uh, to better understanding the better uh, way to understand this thing, so you can download that also. But it seems like um, yes. So if we, if you want to see uh, the architecture, so they these all are the separate Docker files. All the uh, content are copying to the main file. All the configuration are set up place in that directory, and other other modulation installation binaries, and and then it will create a uh, main image for uh, Nightingale. So coming back to the uh, list of the commands that you have to run. So there are two ways to create this image. Either you, if you can uh, just pull this particular image, the pre-built image from the Docker up. And if you want to alter some, some configuration here, and if you want to create your own Docker, uh, Docker image, then you can just follow the, these, uh, these, these commands. And uh, so I'm just skipping all uh, the, the creating images and creating the container for the same. I just going to the direct command which is required to start the container so i have already started the container but for the demonstration purpose i just changed the port okay so let me get uh, 600 and uh, 600 seven. okay so i have just changed the uh, port number so just check it. Uh, it will create a uh, like a, a, a unique number for the container, and it just started. So it will not take that much time to uh, start the container. If in if we can see here, we have uh, running this particular container six zero zero six. As I have already created a new container, so let's jump it into the tool. Okay. So this. Tool uh, is again as I have already mentioned in uh, uh, in my previous slides. So it is a CLI, complete page CLI thing. So um, okay, I think I have uh, okay cool. So here you can see um, the, uh, like as what I have told, uh, these are the categorization of the uh, scope of this tool. Like if you want to work with the VAPT tools, then there is a folder. If you want to work as an OSINT, then there, there is a folder. So same goes like uh, after creating the Docker image or after pulling the Docker image. So if we want to, let's say, um, okay, if you want to go with the uh, web VAPT, so there are n number of tools, not n number of like there are specific number, but we can install n number of tools, what uh, the number of which you want to install in your machine. So that's not an issue. So it will take, it will not, uh, it will not make any any impact, many make any uh, uh, load on this particular container. So let's say if I want to use uh, that search. So there is um, okay. So if I go with, uh, let's say Python three dot search. So as you can see here, uh, I'm able to run this particular uh, tool, which is again used for finding the, uh, the directory, the directory enumeration for any of the URL. So this is how it is, it will work. Now there are some multiple features uh, which I haven't shown in the first uh, slide in the very first beginning of the slide because I want to show that practically. Now the thing is, uh, so you can relate this particular feature, this particular thing, uh, like if you are working in a Linux environment or Windows environment or Mac environment, you are just putting multiple tabs, multiple uh, terminals, like you set up these terminals in in the uh, screen just to set up, just to take all the data. Um, uh, relatable to you know what data you are getting from one uh, terminal and what other data you are getting from the another terminal. So just go through with all the things. So uh, in our uh, browsers, there there is a there is a feature or uh, there is a functionality we can say you can uh, open up to 99 tabs at a time. So so in that 99 tabs, you can just open the another another instance of this particular Nightingale thing. So let me open that. Um, 
six zero zero six. Okay, cool. So now, as you can see, I have uh, like just to show you, just to demonstrate you the thing. I have just run this particular command and it shows all the menus, all the parameters for this particular tool. And when I hit that another tool, another new terminal, another new tab, so the complete data is a new session for the previous one. So the thing is, it is completely independent what you are doing in the previous tab and what you are you will be going to do in your uh, in your very new and very new uh, new session or uh, new terminal of this nightingale. So let me uh, done a very simple command. Um, of course, Raja, think, it's normal <laughs> for yeah. this to happen because uh, we're on a live demo. Do not yes. worry about that. Uh, I think the presentation is going uh, very well. I would also like to remind everyone if they want to pose you questions, feel free to do that on the Q&A section. We will answer them by the end of our session. And also if everyone wants to contact you later, they can do that on your media platforms. Uh, I would like to say that Raja is a very qualified in his uh, uh, sector, I would say. He's also holding the certified ethical hacker certification kudos to that uh, you think we can resume now and continue with our presentation yes so uh like okay so should i continue yes absolutely thank you uh, yeah thank you so uh so somehow the nmap is not working so we can go with the meta exploit so if i type msf console then it will run. It will definitely run because of the configuration, which again, uh, let me show you the configuration. So for the Metasploit configuration, it is very simple. What we are usually do is like just pull the uh, the script from this particular uh, GitHub user contained and the rapid server link and just run that particular by providing the uh, executable, executable permission for the tool. But what I, ha I have did like, uh, I had just uh, created the configuration for DBSQL which create a blank uh, database, which we have to done at the time of uh, like when we install freshly installed Metasploit and we have to uh, create the database for the same. That init is nothing but creating the uh, the services. And here, uh, this database.yml is nothing but it has the uh, configuration for the database. So let me tell you uh, the configuration. Um, config and database.yml. So here you will be seeing like the database name, the database user, the password. You can change your password as per your requirement, your uh, like whatever suits you. And the host, again, it is very, uh, very common. Like we will run all uh, this particular database in the, in, in the uh, container itself. But if I want to access this particular database, then what we can do is like, we just go to the Docker container command and we will provide a port port forwarding for 5432, which is port for the uh, post figure, I mean, um, Postgres, and we will provide a uh, port for uh, for which we, we are going to use in our post machine. So in that way, uh, everyone can able to uh, like connect this particular uh, instance of Postgres into your uh, host machine. So this is how the configuration of Metasploit, and yes, include <clears throat> beautiful uh, Metasploit uh, banner has been just raised, so you can do anything which which you want. Let's say um, search, search, exploit. So it will provide you all the list which you usually do in your virtual machine. So everything you are doing is uh, which is common in in this particular tool. Now there is again a one which I again want to not show and uh, not want to discuss in the very first slides but I want to show in the demonstrations, right? So let's go with uh, a, a big part of uh, mobile pen testing. Okay. So for, uh, so there are two things. The very first thing is like, we, you have to connect your Android device to the ADB driver to just uh, communicate with your Android device. But in iOS, like if you want to connect, then you have to create with the SSH uh, connection. That is very, uh, very common. So, so if we if we go here, like you will be getting the option for SSH. So you do, don't need to worry about that uh, because I have the limited resources. I have only the uh, Android device right now, the rooted Android device. So 
I can't be able to show the demonstration of iPhone, but for the Android, let me tell you uh, how we can connect to the ADB and uh, how we can go uh, forward for the same. So for Metasploit, I mean, uh, for the MobSF uh, configuration, you have to perform these, these uh, configuration. And for that, uh, there is a, there is a uh, virtual virtual environment, Python virtual environment. You can see here VENV. So what you have to do is like uh, just paste this particular command. Okay. So by this command, it will activate your uh, Python virtual environment. Okay. Now what you have to do is like uh, there is a file run.sh, which I have already um, provide the executable format. So we can just uh, run.sh 0.0.0.0, which is again, uh, uh, like you can you can uh, call each and every every uh, network adapter for this part by providing this IP. And we have to provide a port, which we have mentioned here. So now 8080, 8081 is nothing but a port for uh, like providing the mob SF. So you have to provide here is uh, 60. Uh, I mean, sorry. You have to provide uh, 8081 as for uh, yes and provide by n so that it can run in the background. So as you can see here, uh, we have just run our uh, mob SF environment and it is running. So once you, you click the enter, it will goes again down to the background and uh, you won't be able to check what all the processes is doing. Now, if we go here and we we run, we have to run the port 6007. Now there is a game change and uh, the game change is nothing but a very small thing change. So 808081, which I run inside the container and 6007, which I use as a port forwarding. Now this port forwarding work only on uh, our host machine so that you can able to access whatever you are running inside the container and like whatever you want to access and your host machine. So this is how uh, this this uh, beautiful tool again uh, will pop up. You have to upload the APK and do your other stuff. So that is the automated part. But if you want to, uh, let's say, connect your uh, Android device, connect, connect with your Android device inside that container, then again, there is a, there is a great tool called ADB, uh, ADB Connect, and uh, 192, 168, 29.66, colon 5555. Five, five. Um, it will take time. Uh, okay, just a second, please. Raja, thank you very much. I would just like to let you know that uh, as for currently, it's only visible the VS code and we cannot see how you're performing and what you're writing. So if you could perhaps uh, reshare your screen and everyone would like to see your screen uh, whenever you are writing a certain comment. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought uh, we have just here. Okay, just a quick one. It's we'll okay, it's, it's not a problem. It's just because everyone would like to see how your presentation is going because it's really interesting to all of us. Thank you. Um, please let me know uh, what screen is uh, visible to you, like uh, the, the 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 terminal one, right? Yes. Now we can see. Uh... Okay. Okay. Uh, so, like a quick one. Um, Again, like uh, this particular MSF console, which I have run, so you can run each and every uh, command from like whatever you've done in your uh, Linux machine. So like it is completely same. The, the, the nature of this particular tool is completely same. What you are doing in, uh, let's say, in your uh, Kali Linux environment, in your Parrot OS environment, in your uh, Ubuntu operating system environment, and any of the environments. So, uh, again, if we go with the uh, mobile pen testing, so these are these are the functionality, these are the features which I haven't uh, discussed in the very first, very few slides of the uh, presentation, but I want to demonstrate uh, like live demonstration for the same so that it can be uh, like easy to understand the things. So like for the Metasploit, again, uh, this is uh, like I have just run this particular command. 
So, and these terminal, which again, I will uh, repeat this thing. So these uh, terminal are completely independent to each other. So whatever you are doing here, it is completely different. Now, if we go with the mobile pen testing, I had run this uh, mob SF thing. So that will come. So you you will provide all the steps in in the readme section. So you will go to go through with that. So and if, if anything uh, like make any hurdle for the same, you can just ping me anytime uh, on my social media platform. So okay, coming to that, uh, I have just created the uh, mob SF environment and uh, it created and it started inside the uh, six zero zero seven, which I have uh, bind the port forward. Now. If I want to connect my physical device to this particular container, then I just run this ADB command and the uh, IP address and the port, which is again a, um, a default port for Android. So it is already connected. It is showing because I have just authenticated the request. So now if I want to run uh, ADB shell, so if you can see here, the terminal got changed, the user got changed. And if we go to the root user, I'm also able to root that because that phone is rootable form, rooted form. So um, if I run who am I, you can see the root user. If I want to PM list packages, so you can see all the packages which is running inside that particular device. So it is it is again very simple and also uh, like above Android 11, uh, there is a very great functionality to run this Android uh, like. And Android debugging over the TCP. So I have connected over the TCP. There is no uh, USB has been connected. So this is how uh, the demonstration, this is how the working, this is how the architecture, and this is how the installation part of it, Nightingale. So I'm done with my uh, the demonstration thing. So uh, any questions? Thank you, Raja, again. Thank for you. your presentation, it was wonderful. It's very nice to see that uh, we can have a Docker image to contain every single tool that we need as a penetration tester. And for now, we do not have any feedback from everyone. I think uh, this is because your presentation was so detailed and we understood everything that you were trying to show to us. Uh, one more time, I would like to thank the attendees for being part of our conference and Raja, of course, for his presentation. Uh, I would encourage everyone to stay on the Zoom call and see other sessions. Hope to see you guys again soon, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.